What is going on guys? Greg TV. We're going to go through the display settings on the Galaxy Note 9 to show you a little bit about uh, Android Pi Beta, also known as Samsung One UI. So let's get right into it. Swipe down from the top, go into settings, and then go into display. And a lot of this stuff, again, I've said this before in some of my other videos about this stuff, it's relatively the same. You can increase the brightness right here, wherever you want. I usually keep it in the middle. Uh, you can do adaptive brightness, which keeps track of your brightness adjustments and applies them automatically in similar lighting conditions. I don't keep that on. I, I don't know. I, it's kind of just always in the middle, usually. And then when I go outside, I'll, I'll max it out, usually. Blue light filter is going to be when your screen turns like yellow to be easier on your eyes. It's going to be warmer rather than cooler like it is right now. And you can go in here and you can... Um, if you turn it on now, you can make it more yellow or less yellow, wherever you really want. Um, you can also turn on a schedule so that maybe you want it sun, sunrise to sunset. Um, it'll do that for you and allow you to, you know, get ready for bed easier without those blue lights bursting into your eyes. You can also set the start time, end time, if you want to customize that a little bit. I have mine uh, to where it turn, turns on at 9 p.m. and then ends at 7 a.m. We'll turn that off just so it looks a little bit better on video. Uh, night mode is, you can see right here, it's black. I can turn it off and then it goes white like it normally is. This is a new feature in um, One UI where you can have dark mode basically in all of your Samsung apps. It'll allow you to do that. Um, screen mode, this is gonna be similar to what you had in the past. You can, I have it set to adaptive display. You can also do AMOLED, cinema. You can just look at the photo. Some of the colors will like change ever so slightly. You can also do basic. If you go into adaptive display, you can hit this little thing here and you can make it more cool, more warm, however you want. You can go into uh, advanced options and really ma mess around with the, the red, blue, green color uh, to make it customized to how you really want to look. That's what I love about Samsung phones. It's just so much customization that you can really make the phone how you want to make it. And that's a, a beautiful thing in uh, uh, technology. Next up, we have the font size and style. I go into here, when I set up some of my family's uh, phones, especially if they have a Samsung, I'll go in here and do some of this stuff. I'll make the font sizes larger for them so that it's easier for them to read. Um, yeah, and I also go into this one, which is screen zoom. This allows them to maybe see things a little bit better because it makes everything bigger on the screen. You can zoom in if you want. And again, nice little feature to have on these phones. Um, screen resolution is grayed out because I am running this at peak performance. So if you are on high, high performance mode, um, that will be grayed out because they set the max resolution to 2960 by 1440. But otherwise, if you don't, that'll be in there and you can click on there and change the resolution to as low as I think it's 720p to get better battery life and maybe even some better performance. Full screen apps is going to be when you want your apps to be full screen or not. You can choose which apps you want to use in full screen aspect ratio. So sometimes you open up an app and it'll be like, it'll only open up this much, but if you have it automatically turned on, it'll stretch it out. And it usually looks normal, but sometimes the app doesn't work. So if that happens to you, you can always go in here and turn it off if you have it turned on. And again, it's pretty easy to turn this stuff on. Just tap it. You can also hit right here. And you can sort by name if you want all apps or configurable apps. So kind of cool right there to make the apps full screen or not. Next up, we have screen out timeout. So you can uh, have the screen not turn off for as long as 10 minutes. It'd be nice to have that unlimited. Um, I don't know why they don't have that as an option. I could have swore they had 30 minutes at one time. Maybe that's a different phone, but as little as 15 seconds, as long as 10 minutes, the screen will like automatically turn off. Sometimes, or otherwise you can just hit your power button and that'll allow you to turn it off there. Uh, home screen, this is gonna be the same settings you'll see if you press long press on your home screen. Uh, you'll come up with these settings where you can change the home screen layout, where you can choose uh, home screen and home and app screen. So if you swipe up, you'll see all your apps or you can just have home screen only. So all your apps, almost like an iPhone does, all your apps will be on one screen. You won't have to swipe up to see the rest of your apps. You also can change the grid size in here. So if you want to change the grid, you make it bigger, smaller, whatever you want, you can do that. You also can do that in the app screen grid. I have it four by six, but maybe you want to make it easier to see for your eyes so you don't have to uh, squint so much, or maybe you want to make it smaller so you can fit more apps and have less pages of apps. 
Then you have the apps button, show a button on the home screen that opens the apps screen. So basically old school, you turn that on, you'll have a um, button down here that says apps. Instead of having to swipe up, you can just tap that apps button bottom right and it'll bring you into your apps. Then we have, let's go back to home screen, app icon badges. That's gonna show you if you have a notification or not. I think iPhone, I mean, Samsung's been doing it for a while too, but if you have a uh, notification, it will give you, I don't have any currently because I have it turned off, but you'd have like a little one or whatever next to like Yahoo Mail or something, letting you know you have a notification to go in there and look at. You can lock your home screen layout, prevent items on the home screen from being removed or repositioned. That's a nice little thing. I like this. I've said this in a previous video about um, this new updated software that, you know, it's nice for older people who just have their core apps on there. If I have this turned on, home screen lock uh, layout, I can't move these up. So I long press, you know, it's not gonna go anywhere. That's what's beautiful about this. A lot of people, especially older people I've noticed that have Samsung phones or any Android phones, like their apps are all over the place. I set it up a certain way for them and then I go back in here and it's not <laughs> the way it was. So that's a nice little feature to have that turned on there. If you, that way they can't, you know, move their apps around. Uh, and then add apps to home screen. When you download a new app, it'll automatically add that to the home screen. I keep that on, I like that on. A quick notification, open notification panel is basically scroll, uh, swipe down to open notifications from the home screen. You can pretty much do that from anywhere. So I don't have to go all the way up here. I can just kind of do it from here, wherever I am to easily get to that information. Then we have the portrait mode only. So basically prevent the home screen from rotating to landscape mode. When that's turned on, it's always gonna be up and down. Whereas if I have it turned off and I go like this, it's going to make my home screen go that way as well. I like it off because Sometimes I'm in bed and I don't want that thing <laughs> going anywhere. Uh, you can hide your apps too if you want. If you don't want your boyfriend or girlfriend to see your dating app that you have on there. You can go in here and just hide your apps for, from them so that they can't see them. And I think that's it within here, yep. So let's go back here. So go into edge lighting style and in here, you can really customize what you have. So you can go into the effects and choose different effects. I have it set to galaxy. And then after that, you can choose the color, I have it set to red, or you can choose really any color of the rainbow that you want on here. Click that one and basically, like I said, choose any color that you want. Choose green. Green's pretty happy. Um, you can also go into transparency and make it lower or higher, to how, how transparent you want it to be. And then that is, oh yeah on a, a edge lighting interaction that allows you to tap or swipe the edge lighting pop-up to perform various actions. Uh, open an app, tap the lighting pop-up while the screen is on or double tap it when the screen is off. Open an app and pop-up. So it gives you some more options to tap or swipe the edge lighting pop-up to perform various actions if you have that turned on. And then taking a step back here, you can manage your notifications. And this is going to allow you to turn on or off certain uh, notifications for the edge screen. If you don't want it to light up or not, you can turn that on or off right here just by tapping that. So if you want messages, blah, 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 or you want all apps, you can leave it as all apps. And that is it for edge lighting. Then we have about edge lighting. Let's go back here. Easy mode, this is good for, I guess, I don't know, Older people, I keep saying older people, but maybe it is good for older people. It just simplifies your phone, basically. Um, if you have it turned on, I'll show you what it looks like. I'll hit apply. It just makes everything, like, see how my, <laughs> everything just got, like, big and, like, old person looking. Almost, it, it's still a smartphone, but it almost looks like a, like a dumb phone in a way. But uh, it's a cool little feature I have, I guess, if you just want to sim really simplify the phone for somebody, make the icons real big, so they don't have to go in there and just mess with all the settings. Um, they can go in there and do that. I'm gonna turn that off though. I don't need that. Don't need it. And then uh, next you have navigation bar. Uh, you can hard press the home button. So you can change the way you hard press the home button. For instance, uh, if you are accessing information, so like if you press and hold it, it'll turn on the screen for you. Uh, you can unlock with the home button. So hard press the home button while the screen is off to skip the lock screen and go directly to the home screen. That's a nice thing to have. 
Uh, navigation buttons, you can go in here and customize uh, the navigation buttons the way they look in here. So you can make it full screen gestures or navigation buttons, or you can you know, mess with the order of the buttons. I like the the the, home, the back button on the right. I know a lot of Android phones put it on the left, but I don't know, I'm not, you know, I'm always holding my phone with the right, so why not keep it on the right? It's just easier to reach the back button rather than reaching all the way across, because I don't use the recent apps button all that often. And then accidental touch protection, it protects your phone from accidental touches when it's in a dark place, such as a pocket or a bag. So you won't, you won't butt dial someone basically. So if you remember butt dialing somebody where you'd call someone accidentally, this stops that from happening, or at least decreases the chances of it happening. Touch sensitivity, you can increase the touch sensitivity of the screen for use with screen protectors. So if you have a screen protector on, you can turn this on and then the touch sensitivity um, will increase for you so you can uh, you know, get better touch sensitivity. So in case you lost some of it because of that screen, because of that screen protector, uh, screensaver shows sure, screensaver after the screen turns off automatically while your phone is charging. So if you turn that on, you can go in here and you can show certain colors. You can show a photo table, photo frame, uh, or uh, photos. So you hit preview. It's going to show you different things. It's kind of a cool thing to have. You know, to have a, a screensaver on your phone um, when it's being uh, you know, used or whatever. Turn that off. And then down here, you have a couple of things. Video Enhancer is going to allow you to enhance the image quality of your videos to enjoy brighter and more vivid colors. I keep this turned on, I like it. It's a cool little thing when I open up my YouTube app, which is the video app I use the most. All my videos are always nice and bright. I don't have to mess with anything. It's just turned on for me. Uh, language and input, this is gonna be where you change your keyboards and things like that. And uh, visibility enhancements, you can turn on high contrast. Theme if you want. And allows you to you know just install if you have a theme installed that's high contrast it'll allow you to basically go into it right from there uh, and some other things negative color show buttons color lens just you know different enhancements if you are visibly challenged and then lastly let's check out always on display when you go in here it's going to be turned on so one of the things i noticed at least for me anyway when i downloaded the one ui update this was turned off so i needed to turn on always on display so that I get my always on display. And one of the things is, some of the things you can show on there are the home button and clock, clock, home button. So I'll just turn this off. Oh wait, let me keep that off. It should pop up and you can see that's what mine looks like. It shows the time, the date, battery percentage, and then any notifications that I have, but I have my notifications turned off. Um, display mode, I have it at show always. Show continuously, select when to show the always on display. You can tap to show or show as scheduled. If you want to set it to a certain time, you can do that. Otherwise, just show always has to be on there. Show music information, show details of the music when the face widget music controller is in use. So that's kind of nice if you're playing certain music, it'll show that. So auto brightness, I have it turned off because I like to just have it a certain you know level so that I can always see it. Because sometimes it's in a dark room and I still can't see it. I, I like my screens bright and Sometimes it's still not bright enough when it's set to auto brightness. And then taking a step back, if you go into clock style, this is where you can kind of um, customize this ever so slightly. You can change the colors, the type, you can make it look that way it looks by default, or you can make it kind of look the way it's looked in the past, or set your own you know, image or style that you want. my son <laughs> um, yeah do some of your calendar events things like that there's a lot of customizations in here that allow you or you can even download some as well if you want to get you know really into this and have somebody else have it put a little design on it for you but yeah that is the display settings on the new Samsung one UI if you have any questions leave them down below guys thanks for watching I'll see you down the road peace